<laughs> Review for the Spanish Prisoner. Directed and uh, written by David Mamet. So the movie... I'm seeing if I should read the synopsis. The company went hired. Yeah, I guess. Okay. An employee who develops a lucrative secret process for his corporation is tempted to betray the company when higher-ups attempt to take the process from him. Dazzardly intrigue ensues. Well, that pretty much covers it. Um... Very interesting movie. I've never even heard of it till recently. Uh, you know, I I like David Mamet. I mean, I think he's a very good writer. He directed this too. Let's see, what else has he directed? Okay, he directed Hoffa. Glengarry Glenn Ross. He directed it. Oh, wait, no, he, he wrote those. Okay. I clicked on director. Iced. Homicide. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of the movies he's directed. I saw Spartan a long time ago. So, but he's a very good writer. You know, Glengarry Glenn Ross. The Verdict, The Untouchables, wow, Hoffa, The Edge, oh, I didn't know he wrote that, I love that movie, wow, he did, he wrote that right before this, that's the same year, okay, Ronin, man, he's such a good writer, um, but this movie is is pretty interesting because Steve Martin's in it, in a totally different role than he usually plays. Not a comedic role. Uh, ben Gazzara, Campbell Scott, Ricky Jay, great actor who was like uh, a magician in real life, and uh, then became an actor. He's in a great X Files episode too, but. So this movie starts off there in um, this Caribbean island. His company sent him there for like a junket, you know, to kind of, they do a little bit of business. They're like, I think they're talking to some investors and, um, you know, he has to kind of uh, give them a little bit of, of this formula that he's, he's uh, came up with. Ricky Jay's with him who's a lawyer and is like his one of like his friend and um at one point he's taking pictures and then Steve Martin walks up to him and he says hey I'll give you a thousand dollars for that camera and he's like what and he's like I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you a thousand bucks for the camera and it's a disposable camera so that he's like here you can just have it and so then he gives it to him, and then he's like, oh, wow, thanks. And then, like, a few nights later, he sees him in the hotel, and they kind of uh, get to talking for a while. They they have some drinks. Maybe they become, like, friends. And then Steve Martin says to him right when the guy's about to leave, Campbell Scott, who's the star of the movie, Campbell Scott, um, hey, can you deliver this to my sister, because you're in New York which they already talked about. He says, sure. It's, a, it's like a book. And uh, he gives it to him, and he says, okay, I'll deliver it to her. And then he, and then Steve Martin's like, okay, well, I'm going to be in town on Friday. Like, you want to, like, let, let, let go get dinner? And he's like, okay, sure. So, so, so they does that. He's, uh, he's in, he's in the airplane. And one of the ladies uh, that his secretary says to him, she kind of mentions that like some people smuggle stuff through airports and all this stuff. So then he kind of gets nervous and kind of, uh, and he's like, whoa, is this guy like trying to make me break the law? 
So then he goes in the bathroom, opens it up, and it's just a book on tennis. Because earlier they talked about tennis. Um, and he's a fan of tennis, Steve Martin, and he's giving this book to his sister. So that's pretty much like right in the beginning of the movie. Um, now this is a this is it's a good movie. It's a little slow, especially the first half. I was kind of just like, where is this going? Uh, I don't really want to say because there's there's some good twists and turns at the la the second half. Um, the synopsis gives a little bit away, but I, I think that's okay because I read the synopsis before I saw the movie. Um, one thing about, uh, David Mamet is, like, everyone talks, like, the same. Like, I do have to say, it's like, like, the women talk the same, the, all the men, they just all sound like David Mamet, pretty much, which is pretty funny. But, I don't know, I was just noticing that in the movie. That, that's just how it seems to me. Um, Roger Ebert gives it three and a half out of four stars. I don't know if I get that give it that high. Uh, the last act is really good though, very good. Like Mamet's right, like, his screenplays are very tight. Um, up until the half point, it's I don't know, it's a little flat or boring. Maybe, maybe it's just Campbell Scott. I know I've seen him in some other stuff, but he's just kind of a flat actor, but I think that's all on purpose. It's just kind of this mundane corporate life where they're making a lot of money, but, you know, it's a little mundane. He has this process, this this formula that he keeps locked in a safe. It's the only copy. Only him and Ricky J have the keys. There's two keys. They're very secretive, hush hush about this thing. There's talk of you oh, it has to be secure. There could be corporate espionage, people trying to steal it. Um, so that's all kind of in the background. And then he's kind of the the sec the secretary, she's kind of you could tell she she likes him. You know, he's a little cold towards her, but he probably likes her too. Like he he buys her an upgrade. He upgrades her ticket to first class. Uh, because Ricky J won a bunch of money at the casino, and then he gives Campbell Scott half of it. For some reason, I thought that was kind of weird, but uh, so then he kind of just spends it on an upgrade for her ticket. But uh, Roger Ebert says the movie does not take place in Spain. And has no prisoners. The title refers to a classic con game. Mamet, whose favorite game is poker, loves films where the characters negotiate a thicket of lies. Spanish pr prisoner resembles Alfred Hitchcock in the in in the way that everything takes place in full view on sunny beaches, and in brightly lit rooms with attractive people seeming smiling, pulling the rug out from under the hero and revealing the abyss. The hero is Joe Roche, Campbell Scott, who has invented a process that will make so much money for his company that when he writes the figure on a blackboard, we don't even see it. Only the shining eyes of executives looking at it. He works for Mr. Klein, Ben Gazzara, yeah, who is, um, oh man, Jackie Treehorn in, um, in the Big Lebowski, who has who has uh, convened a meeting in the Caribbean to discuss the process. Also on hand is George, a company lawyer, played by Ricky J, a professional musician, expert in charlatans, who is Mamet's friend and collaborator. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and, and and there is Susan, Rebecca Pigeon, Mamet's wife. Oh, that's his real wife? Oh, wow. Whose heart is all flutter for Joe Rosh, and who is very smart and likes to prove it by saying... Smart things that end on a triumphant note. As if she expects a gold star on her report card. To the Caribbean island comes a man named Jimmy Dell, Steve Martin, who may or may not have arrived by a by seaplane. We see how Martin Mamet creates uncertainty. Joe thinks the man arrived by a seaplane, but Susan thinks he didn't, and provides photographic proof, which as far as we can see proves nothing. And in the end, it doesn't matter if he arrives by seaplane or not. The whole episode 
is used simply to introduce the idea that Jimmy Dell may not be what he seems. So, and yeah, I, I won't really just get into the, the twist. It's, it's pretty good. So, overall, like the movie, uh, never heard of it, just watched it. And a uh, very enjoyable movie, especially the second half. The first half, a little slow, a little kind of like, where is this going? But I think it goes to a, a, a really nice place. So, but um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, like, comment below, especially uh, comment below if you've seen the movie, what you think of it. Try not to spoil it. But uh, that's about it. See you next time.